Hello, we're going to continue our reading through the Gospel of John with the story of Nicodemus and Jesus in chapter 3. So this is verses 1 through 21. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. <clears throat> so, it may be somewhat sacrilegious to do this section and not spend time talking about John 3.16 but I'm actually not going to talk about that section because I want to talk about Nicodemus and some things that interest me about Nicodemus as I read this section. So there, there are kind of three things that stand out to me with Nicodemus. The first one might seem like a real minor textual detail, but he comes at night. It says that he comes by night. And in the Gospel of John, and probably in other places in Scripture, night is a picture of spiritual darkness. And so with Nicodemus coming at night, we get a picture of somebody who is stumbling around in the dark. And in the Gospel of John, there are some other places where night refers to spiritual darkness. So in John 9, 4, he says, Jesus says, We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. And in eleven ten, he says, But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. And then perhaps most famously in John 13, uh, Judas, after receiving the morsel of bread, immediately goes out and it says, and it was night. And then we also think of another um, writing from John in Revelation 21 and 22. It says that there will be no more night, that night will be no more because the one seated on the throne and the lamb will provide all the light. So Nicodemus comes at night. He's stumbling spiritually. He's, he's in the dark. Another thing that interests me about Nicodemus is that he doesn't understand Jesus. Um, when Jesus makes statements to Nicodemus, the two times that Nicodemus responds, he responds with questions because he's perplexed. He really doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know how to understand Jesus. And the first time, he interprets Jesus in the most literal and farcical way possible when he says, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And it reminds me of sometimes, um, you know, you'll make a point to somebody and they'll take it and they'll caricaturize it to, to make it as absurd as possible. 
Um, you may tell somebody that you're a Christian and they'll say, oh, so you're one of those people who believes that Jonah really was in the belly of a whale for three days. Uh, so they seize on something and they run with it. And I think it's because Nicodemus uh, can't understand Jesus and he also perhaps doesn't want to understand Jesus. Um, Jesus talks about being born again to see the kingdom of God and that messes with Nicodemus's view as a Pharisee of how to see the kingdom of God because the Pharisees believed that the kingdom of God would come through strict observance of the law. And for Jesus to say you have to be born again really would mess with his understanding of how one enters into the kingdom of God. And so in the end, he, the last thing we hear from Nicodemus in this section is he says, how can these things be? He's utterly perplexed. He doesn't get Jesus at all. And, and kind of stemming from that, the third thing that interests me about Nicodemus is that he gets put in his place. Um, he's a teacher, he's a Pharisee, and yet he doesn't understand how the kingdom of God works. And when he comes to Jesus, the first thing Nicodemus says is, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus and he makes an assessment of Jesus's ministry. And he says, basically, we have talked about it and we say, yes, you probably have come from God. <coughs> so in a way, Nicodemus kind of sees himself in the driver's seat as far as evaluating Jesus's ministry. And by the end, Nicodemus is asking Jesus, how can these things be? And Jesus says, are you the teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? So Jesus is saying, Nicodemus, you don't know what you're talking about. And you should. As the teacher of Israel, you should know these things, but you don't know what you're talking about. So he gets put in his place. And Jesus says, uh, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. So two things are going on there. Jesus says, we're speaking from the inside. We know these things because we live in them. You just talk about them and you don't talk about them accurately. And plus he's putting a finger on Nicodemus that Nicodemus has maybe not even been truthful about what he said in verse two when he said, we believe that you come from God. Jesus says, you have not received our testimony. So Nicodemus has maybe not even been entirely truthful with Jesus in their, the Pharisees' assessment of him. So I think it's interesting that he gets put in his place. But you know, one thing that we want to say about Nicodemus, despite these things, is that after Jesus has died, John says in chapter 19, He says that Joseph of Arimathea came and took away Jesus' body. He says, Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. And so Nicodemus, for all his misgivings in this chapter that we read today, he, he's there at the end. He's there helping bury Jesus' body. And so Nicodemus may have been in spiritual darkness, stumbling around. He may have not been able to understand Jesus or didn't want to. And he certainly got put in his place. But he persisted. And we find in the middle of the Gospel of John that, that Nicodemus is beginning to give Jesus the benefit of the doubt. When the Pharisees are berating Jesus, uh, Nicodemus says, this is in chapter 7, verse 50. He says, Does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? In other words, shouldn't we give Jesus more of a hearing to, to see if he's telling the truth, to see if he's legitimate? And so it shows that Nicodemus is persisting and he's starting to give Jesus the benefit of the doubt. And then he's there helping to bury his body after he died, which I think shows that he believed in Jesus. I don't know if he actually would consider himself a disciple, but I think he believed in Jesus because you don't go and bury a crucified rebel if you don't believe in him. And I think this should encourage us. Uh, we pass through spiritual darkness. We pass through our own nights. There are times where we hear the words of Jesus 
and we don't understand or we don't want to understand and the hardness of our hearts prevails. And we certainly get put in our place by Jesus when we are on the wrong side of the things that he's saying. We discover that we don't know all that we think that we know. But if we persist and we give Jesus the benefit of the doubt, we'll be there with him in the end. Amen? Amen. Have a great night.